seminars for dogs with Dr. Adam, the chief clinician at Healthy Pets Veterinary Hospital. We're very grateful to have him here this evening to talk to us about pain and how to identify pain in your dog. And once you've figured out if they're in pain, how much pain, and then what you can do about it. Um, this is a kind of complicated topic, and we're thrilled to have someone with the skill and expertise of Adam here to talk about it. Um, this event is sponsored by Small Club because we care about the well-being of your dogs in a holistic way. And also, we're here tonight at Muttville Senior Dog Rescue, which is one of our. We're grateful that all of you are here to support these senior dogs looking for homes as well. Um, goodie bags are provided by Quattro Bathhouse and Feed. Feed company, so please grab one on your way out. And that, um, we will reserve 30 minutes at the end of this session for question and answer. So when that time arrives, I'll let you know, and we'll go to the audience. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Thanks, uh, Small Club and Madville for hosting me. Today's topic is a big one, and it's a very elusive one because um, you know pain is something that. <laughs> Is, is I think truly understood only on very much an individual level. I don't like you know when it hurts, when something hurts you, but it's really hard to to um, to figure out you know how much someone else is in pain. They can you know people as people can vocalize it or, or express it or describe it. Um, you know as as creatures who don't really verbalize things, um, it is not so easy to uh, to express it. You know on top of that, you know pain. Um, it's not something that you always want to show. Um, certain species are, as in most species, are um, have figured out that you know showing pain, showing weakness that usually comes along with pain, isn't really a a, a good thing. It will not really get you any pity points with, with uh, members of your own pack and and um, and individuals outside of your pack. So so pain can be very well hidden. Um, you know you, you will. Notice uh, perhaps some alterations to to uh, one's behavior, to, you know, to your dog's or cat's behavior, but uh, it'll it'll really take a, a keen eye to figure out what is missing from uh, from their life. What what the what is happening that does not allow those individuals to to live a a full and happy life, you know, and, and also uh, you know pain will have consequences um, on one's internal function because pain is a source of stress and when you're under chronic stress um, usually this, this will have um, repercussions on on how well you can maintain other parts of your body, the parts that are not uh, actually painful. Um, so wh what is pain? Um, you know pain is a, is a perception of a noxious stimulus which is a which is a type of stimulus that can actually cause or is causing injury to your tissues um, so as in you are breaking something or something is being damaged internally and um, and uh, you know it, it usually features two things you know first is a, a very sharp pain sensation which comes from um, that is conducted via a specialized uh, type of nerves called type A fibers, um, uh, and that allows you to withdraw yourself from that dangerous, noxious, uh, damaging situation. Uh, but once you jump away from the painful stimulus, um, and if you have sustained some damage to your tissues, well, there is a tissue damage, so the cells burst open, they release their contents, and it leads to a, a activation of inflammatory cascade, which uh, which is um, characterized by things like heat, swelling, uh, redness, um, pain, and uh, loss of function. So uh, that that is how you know that something did get ripped. It wasn't just uh, you know it wasn't just something that happened once and and you're done with it just because you pulled away from you know something that's burning you or something that's poking you. There is actually there's actually been some damage done, and, and inflammation kicks in in order to um, to seal things and heal things, restore things to uh, to their previous uh, state. Uh, sometimes it is done very effectively, as in the case of skin, you know, cut on the skin or or you know, rip in a in a mucous membrane of the mouth or stomach or intestines. Sometimes it's not very um, productive response, as, as in the case of you know, brain or heart or or joints uh, or teeth, um, because you know, these structures don't really benefit from um, f 
from uh, prolonged inflammatory process around them. In fact, some get further damaged by by such um, by such inflammation. So, um, so the causes of pain, you know, trauma or injury. So, you know, we all have taken a spill and and you know bumped our knees or bumped our elbows or hit our head, and, and it's pretty painful. Um, but you know, you can you know if you're like running and and really hyped about it, well, the the once you experience something that's very um, acutely painful, um, you know, the adrenaline kicks in and you get what's called a runner's high, as in, you know, for the sake of getting yourself out of the bad situation, you know, you forget about the pain and you keep running the other way. Um, and, um, and um, you know, but eventually, you know, things start throbbing. If it's not the same day, it is the next day, you know, as in overnight, your body will send all the little um, cells and inflammatory, inflammatory substances, and, and you know just the entire apparatus to go to the uh, to the site of injury and, and start chopping down all the broken parts and um, and reconstruct um, or construct new new structures. Um, if if that's not possible, if the tissue has to be uh, cleaned up and and there's no way to replace it, you know, you will get a some degree of scar tissue formation at the site of, of that injury. Um, uh, some other sources of, uh, of pain is degeneration, as in, you know, things do not really break down as we get older, you know, so we lose our ability to quickly regenerate our tissue. So, um, and again, some, some, some tissues are not very good at it. So if you, you know, let's say if you, uh, if you herniate a disc in your spine, well, your body is trying to fix it or heal it, and it'll keep spooling scar tissue around it um, to try to st stabilize the the uncomfortable uh, spot in the back. You know, and the point is to immobilize things. So if you don't move things, things tend to repair quicker and better. Um, but um, but the the long-term consequences of of this process are are not so great because you end up with a whole bunch of scar tissue that is a very prone to re-injury um, and tears and it, it uh, leads to restriction of range of motion. So, you know, maybe the pain is less, but the stiffness is more. Like as in, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very hard to move to, 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 uh, to retain one's range of motion. And of course, you know, then if you try to do things that, that are past that limit of range of motion, you will re-injure and, and uh, chronic injuries lead to more and more and more scar tissue formation to the point where, you know, sometimes really bad things happen as in, you know, you pinch off your, the nerve supply, uh, you know, you pinch, you actually uh, uh, apply pressure to uh, to nerve cells and, and it leads to neurological dysfunction as in um, increased sensation in the back legs or or no feeling in the back legs. Um, it's very common in, uh, in our and our doggy friends, and we'll go through a couple of cases where where this will be explained. Uh, so uh, infections are also um, painful because they, in fact, damage normal body parts. Some, sometimes infections are consequences of, uh, of of injury. You know, so if you fall on a on an asphalt and scrape your skin, well, that that will take a lot of in inflammation to fix that. Well, and that's it's a really you know, all that redness, heat, swelling, um, pain, you know, it's, it, it, it makes it easier for inflammatory cells to repair the damage, but it's also a very nice, hot, moist, nutrient-filled bed for things that are all over, which is, you know, microbes that live on our skin and microbes that, that are floating around in the air. So, um, so that there will be an example of a secondary bacterial infection. Um, well, I feel most bacterial infections are secondary, um, as in if you have healthy immune responses and intact bodily systems, you know, the, the bacteria, no matter how nasty it is, won't, you know, start taking bites at you. So, um, so it really takes some degree of, of, of damage to tissues to and inflammation to allow bacterial overgrowth. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> was a, that was a very good example of, uh, of retching. You know, so, uh, <laughs> this is when someone's stomach is very, very sore to the point where you know it turns into dry heaving, and that is one of the symptoms that that commonly uh, accompanies prolonged pain. As in, you know, a good example of stress giving you a stomach ulcer. 
Um, so, um, so what are the common sites of pain in the body? You know, joints are a very good example. Uh, uh, you know, I, when I think of, of my practice, it really you know starts boiling to you know to, to two basic things, which is you know bad joints and bad teeth. And and uh, you know whether this is in, in young animals that aren't very strong to begin with, or or everyone else who you know who hits that you know 10 to 12 year old uh, mark in their in their lifespan and and starts um, experiencing degenerative problems that that lead to inflammatory pain. Um, so so joints. Uh, probably everyone here has a dog that's that's not so great about their joints and and it does require some degree of a uh, of pain management um and then teeth you know which are this this very uh, insidious culprit in um and in, in causing pain or, uh, and inducing secondary symptoms related to pain um and also you know the the teeth um being inflamed or infected are a, a huge roadblock uh, in in management of inflammation elsewhere you know it's really hard to uh, manage inflammatory disease if you have an active infection so if you don't clear it you know no matter how much vitamin c and fish oil you take you have a, an active infection where huge amounts of inflammatory substances are being released and and this will affect other places in the body so um you know do, do our teeth do our dogs have bad teeth uh, well, this is kind of a uh, area of, of, of what I feel is a, is a huge double standard. You know, like if you were to look at it in your dog's mouth and look at your own teeth, they're very different teeth. You know, so I'm well, they look different, of course, and they're differently positioned because they are used for different things. But uh, but you know, um, but you know, we wouldn't really allow to have brown stuff kicked on our teeth or, or this like huge red ring of gingivitis or the or sometimes like the horrendous smell that comes out of our dogs and cats mouth, you know, but but you know you, you go to the vet and they say, well the teeth aren't so bad, you know, let's you know the dog has pushing or the dog has, you know, allergy because it's digging in its face. Um so yeah, I guess allergies, you know, everyone seems to have allergies those days. And and, um, and I'm not saying that there's no allergies as in hypersensitive reactions, but you know, when I when I see a dog that is digging at its face and its ears and whose whose eyes are red all the time, yet you know the the, the patient is not digging at its at its skin elsewhere or chewing at its feet or or has has anal gut problems. You know, I, I worry about more about local problems versus you know things that would be caused by a uh, a systemic release of histamines. And of course, there's a good test for it, as in you try antihistamines and nothing, and, it, and there's no improvement. Um, you do it weeks of antibiotics, you know, problems go away. Your dog is a very different dog. So, um, and you know, the allergies go away. Are allergies responsive to antibiotics? No, not really, you know. So, so when you have something that's responsive to antibiotics, you need to uh, suspect a, um, a, a problem that, that has some, um, infectious component to it if not primary then secondary and with secondary issues again you're looking for a damaged organ on which a bacteria are are happily having a party um, so um, and, and yes you know antibiotics used for uh, for secondary infections will be um, will be effective for the time <laughs> of the antibiotic treatment but the symptoms will relapse shortly after um, the, uh, the cessation of this treatment um, other sources of pain, you know, mucous membranes can be really painful. Also, you know, if you if you bite the side of your cheek, it's pretty painful, and, and then you know it's going to be a bit sore for for 24 hours or so till the till the ulcer goes away. Well, the same type of ulcer can happen in the esophagus, in a stomach, um, in a small intestine, uh, in a colon, on the rectum. So all the way down the digestive tube, it can happen. Uh, on the bladder lining as well. So, so mucosal um, inflammation or 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 a mucosal pain can be something that is caused by actual local physical trigger, as in you know a, a, a dog eating a, a stick or or a piece of metal or a piece of plastic that is just too abrasive as as it slides down the tube and it actually scrapes, creating a rip in the mucous membrane, hence an ulcer, or um, you know, there could be something else going on that, that actually allows for the ulcer formation, as in, you know, the body is stressed out to the point where it can, cannot keep up 
with its with the normal housekeeping activities of of replenishing the mucosal lining every couple of days, and and then you see you know areas of of mucous membrane that are are ulcerated. So, um, yeah, and gums, you know, again, gums kind of go along with the uh, with usually when 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 I see gum inflammation as in gingivitis, uh, it is usually caused by some degree of periodontal disease, which is inflammation of another type of joint in the body, which is a joint that connects a tooth to its socket. Um, it's not the same as a as an elbow joint or a, or a disc, but they are, but it's basically, it's in the, it has the, 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 the same basic function. Um, so, uh, I guess back to, uh, I guess we've done uh, so how to spot pain? You know, so so what do you notice in dogs that are under pain, chronic uh, or acute? You know, with, with, with acute pain, when you have a young dog that you know that goes out to a Fort Funston and another dog runs into it and and a dog yelps, well, it was painful. You know, so I mean that was a, a an example where a dog was actually able to vocalize the discomfort, and that came from uh, the sharp nerve pain that happened as the tissue was being injured, but. Uh, you know, but it could have been, uh, you know, that then you really wait to see how bad was the injury, and this will really manifest over the next several days. As in, you know, the dog is sore that day, um, but you, know, you take him or her home, you do some massage, you you uh, uh, you apply, you know, a, a, a cold compress, you know, give them some arnica, and next morning they're they, they're pretty much back to normal. Or, um, you know, you do all those things, but next day. The dog wakes up and can barely get up, and it starts grunting when it's getting up, and it's off food. You know, it starts, uh, it, you know, it refuses food. It, it doesn't want to go down the stairs, and that's uh, how you know that the damage was extensive and something was ripped, and it'll take some time to uh, repair it. Um, as in, you know, this is a good indication to uh, to simmer down on the activity level uh, and you know truly invest some time in the healing process. Um, and it's really you know worth. While, especially when it comes to um, joint injuries, you know, if you if you don't pack her down and spend some time on healing, you know, the longer that that uh, that lameness or soreness lasts, the the more likely it is to become a permanent feature of of that of that person or, or dog's life. So um, so it's very very important to to heal from the injury before going back to uh, to a previous activity level. So uh, common signs of, uh, of of dogs not being happy because something's taking them. You know they are de depressed and lethargic. You know uh, pain is really draining. Well, if, if any of you had you know lower back pain or or tooth pain and you know you're out of aspirin and you, and you kind of have to experience it for several hours, you know it's, it really takes a lot of energy out of you because you have to. Well, you, you kind of focus on it and it's and it's and it's a very overwhelming sensation. Um, and it's actually. Well, most inflammation it actually is a very costly process, as in you know it does cost to make an area red and swollen and hot. You know you're actually expending energy on a healing process. So um, avoidance behavior. This is a this is a good one. This is where you knowing your dog well uh, comes in very handy, as in you can go back in time and close your eyes and, and say, hey, like my dog used to be able to do that. You know, like I, I he used to be able to you know jump up on the table if he wanted to and or, or go up and down the, those stairs, and now they're not doing this. And and and, and why is this happening? Um, so um, de decreased performance, agility, and stamina. You know, dogs that that have been great, you know, previously, but but now they're really dragging on walks. As in, you know, they every five steps they start panting heavily and and sniff things and and, and pretend to pee on things because you know ev everything smells. Uh, great to them. Well, you know, this is a type of um, stalling behavior or avoidance behavior, you know, refusing to, to, to do things that don't feel very well. Um, changes in posture. Um, you know, when you see a dog that doesn't bend anything, um, there is usually something up with that. Um, you know, there should be some degree of of uh, fluidity in a when we flex and extend our joints. Uh, if it is not happening, um, you know, they, perhaps if the body is trying to um, immobilize something. 
and, and again, pain is, is one of those mechanisms that, that tells you, hey, like, don't bend this arm because if you, you know, because something's, there's a scaffold that's being constructed that's going to serve as a, as a lattice to, for a healing process. So you know, if you, if you bend it, it's going to all fall apart and you're back to square one. Um, changes in eating pattern. Um, in case of you know, painful mouth or painful teeth, you know, favoring parts of the mouth or, or inability to chew things thoroughly or, or, or inability to really pick up whole foods, um, uh, behaviors that look like uh, a dog get, uh, got startled, like you know, picking up the food and, and then there's like a sharp sensation, the mm. food gets dropped, you know, dog uh, backs up, you know, does a little circle and tries again. You know, dogs want to eat their food, you know, but uh, but if it keeps if the food keeps stinging the dog, you know, they usually will will um, will abandon it. Um, uh, and you know, the, the, and as I mentioned, you know, the um, the chronic stress will disrupt uh, normal digestive processes. Uh, again, this has to do with the uh, with the breakdown of, of the mucosal mucous membranes. Uh, you know, two big things that, that I see clinically is gastritis, which is a uh, which was what was just manifested by the squirrel doggy bear. Uh, so this is inflammation of stomach lining uh, caused by ulcerations or or poor rate of uh, replacement of the tissue that lines the stomach. Um, it manifest as uh, changes in posture, as in a sometimes tight belly. Uh, some dogs actually will get up in the middle of the night um, and they start panting, or they start uh, drinking water excessively, as as in like there's a fire in their chest, you know. So um, uh, oftentimes you actually you will hear a stomach gurgling, the, the, all those gassy, bubbly sounds coming from the abdomen. Um, Retching, gagging, uh, hacking, um, wheezing, coughing, um, you know, and, and a lot of people, just like allergies are very popular, you know, people also want to feel, think that their dogs have kennel cough. So, you know, this oftentimes gets swept under, oh, my dog went to the kennel or, you know, just met some dog on the beach and now it has kennel cough, but the dog is really retching. Um, and, uh, you know, acid reflux, as in things actually start coming up to the mouth uh, where it's foam. Uh, fluid, fluid thing with bile, um, bringing up uh, undigested or partially digested uh, meals, previous meals, all of this um, uh, indicates, you know, trouble in the stomach. And then um, the appetite can really go either way. Um, you know, dogs are either uh, off food because, you know, it hurts to swallow things and keep them in, in the stomach, or, you know, the gut is broken, so it will not be pushing things down. It, it's going to try to empty itself. So so food that, that come down will be expelled back um, uh, up to the surface. Um, or, you know, or you actually see ravenous appetite. You know, dogs that are under chronic stress and experience that, that indigestion, heartburn feeling, they just want to swallow anything, and they, and they are described as they're never happy. They're never happy with no matter how much food I give them, you know, they just want more. Um, so, and then the other uh, part of the gut that, that gets hit with stress is a uh, colon. Um, so, um, so we see things like, um, you know, the, the, the role of colon is to um, to is to dehydrate the, the fecal material, so as in to conserve water. But um, you know, colitis um, actually can be part of a, an acute painful uh, response, as in someone is pinching you. Or if you get like really scared of spook, you know, you poop your pants because you know you cannot drop the ballast. You know, things just evacuate very quickly. Um, or, or as in uh, same case as uh, as in case of, of the stomach, you know, the ulcers happen, and then um, and then you see things like uh, cramping, gas, um, inability to hold bowel movements. You know, oftentimes you know I, I hear of 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 dogs that. You know they, they're scrambling to get up. I mean they're very, very stiff, trying to get up. You know, but if, whether they do or, or don't, you know, they the poop comes out of them. You know, so um, and it was the effect of stress. You know, basically, you know, all the energy goes into trying to control the body and and contain the pain, mm -hmm. and you know the, there is no energy to hold it in, so things just slip out. Uh, so. Um, and I guess I didn't write this down, but you know, what do we do about pain? 
Uh, well, it really depends on what the what the uh, source of pain is, you know. So, you know, there's plenty of pain remedies and pain medications. Um, uh, well, basically, management of pain uh, revolves around, you know, a uh, improving the healing rate, as in, you know, allowing body to complete the inflammatory process. You know, if you keep, if you are, if you continue to be inflamed and never heal completely, well, then you're always painful. Um, so, so you have to create an environment where your body or where your your pet's body can heal. Um, but if that's not possible, you know, if if something is truly broken and it will not get better, uh, well, you have to find ways of modulating the pain because at some point it becomes a, a non-productive um, reflex. It, it it no longer helps the patient get away from the bad situation. It is it is a drag. It is a huge stress on on a, on one's energy, um, and uh, and you know then leads to all the other things I mentioned. Uh, so, what are some basic um, ways to relieve pain? Well, what are pain medications? You know, so we have pain medications that control a nerve pain, as in a, when you have a pinched nerve, you know, they, they'll give you morphine or or tramadol or or some other narcotic agents that will block uh, perception of pain on a central level, whether it's in your uh, brain or in your spine. There are dissociative agents that will. Um, prevent a, a proper input of pain impulses from the peripheral nerves in your limbs or elsewhere into your spine. Uh, example would be a ketamine or, uh, or gabapentin. So, and then both of these, ketamine is not really used in this country for oral use, you know, because it's abused horribly by some people. But, you know, the gabapentin is actually very effective remedy to, uh, to deal with nerve pain. Um, and, um, and then there is, you know, a whole group of uh, medications, pharmaceuticals called uh, anti-inflammatories or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, and and aspirin is is a like a antecedent of, of that group of, of drugs, you know, and and um, you know there is a uh, when you inhibit an inflammatory process, um, well, you're really messing up with the uh, with the uh, with the central computer of the body, you know, so you, you turn everything down as far as inflammation, and and you and you will turn down. Uh, Inflammation in places where you want to turn down inflammation, but you also you will impact housekeeping, housekeeping activities of um, of the body, as in delivery of blood to certain organs, as in intestinal lining or, or liver or kidneys. So, so some of those early medications, you know, did have and still do have, you know, a decent um, degree of, of side effects, as in um, irritation of the uh, intestinal tract, ulceration of the stomach, heartburn. Um, all the way to you know to liver or kidney failure. It's definitely not good to give someone aspirin or like medication when they are dehydrated because that that is that is really what puts them at high risk of, of going into kidney shutdown. When you have heartburn already, don't take aspirin because it's gonna make it worse. Uh, so so uh, you know there's you know it's not like those medications are bad. They might not be used very wisely sometimes and 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 can produce you know bad side effects. Um, um, so, well, after aspirin, um, a, a whole a whole other group of drugs came on market. They're called CAX2 inhibitors, and, and these um, medications um, will have selective affinity for inflammatory enzymes and, and less affinity for housekeeping enzymes that, that control inflammation. So, so you have all the benefits of suppressing inflammation at the inflamed area, but you know less stomach and liver and kidney side effects. Um, the, uh, the drugs in this class of new anti-inflammatories are Prevacax, Medicam, uh, Carprofen, or Rimadil, uh, Deramax, and uh, for people, they uh, there was Viax and Baxtra. Baxtra, I think, got taken over the market because it was um, it was causing some problems. Um, Okay, so, so narcotic, uh, narcotics and uh, and dissociatives, anti-inflammatories. Well, does a you know the people live in pain or their pets live in pain always? Well, like I guess you know I'll bring the whole thing of you know, Chinese medicine here. Uh, and um, 
you know, it seems that 4,000 years ago, people had figured out how to manage pain without using any chemicals. And that is to, um, that, that is also, you know, whenever you be managing or suppressing pain, you know, you are kind of, you are, you are messing up with the normal physiological response as well. And you can, you can do the same thing with actually stimulating certain points on, on a surface. Uh, so, you know, you can, you can reduce pain without any chemicals. You can just, if you know how, you can tell the body to stop producing the counter substances or, or not perceive pain, it actually works pretty well. Uh, and there's also a whole bunch of herbals that have very similar effect as aspirin on impacting or even inhibiting um, inflammatory cascade and enhance, you know, leading to less inflammation. Uh, so we have some, you know, Western herbals, um, for example, Boswellia, Yaka, MSM. Uh, uh, these are things that are usually um, combined with, with a glandular tonics for joint support and, and use as herbal anti-inflammatories. Um, and, and, uh, and Chinese medicine has, has several, um, several uh, herbals that are used for the same uh, purpose, and they're actually quite effective. Um, the other aspect of management of pain is, is um, well, I guess let's, you know, uh, I guess I'm going to focus on, on two big things, which is, you know, again, joint pain and tooth pain. Um, with joint pain, uh, well, you don't want to keep ranging yourself. So it's very important to, um, to assume a lifestyle that is not conducive to re-injury. Otherwise, you keep, you keep inflaming the joint and, and eventually you know you will not be able to get up at all because it'll be so painful and so and so stiff and debilitating. Um, you know things like weight control being of a proper body condition is very important. So you know you take the you take the load off of the skeleton. You know avoiding a high high impact activities as as you know, jumping or twisting uh, which are you know very likely to cause re injury. Um, you know, eating properly. Um, you know, I don't know if you believe this or not, but you can eat in ways that that can inhibit inflammation, or you can eat in a way that that uh, promotes inflammation in your in your body. So, so you know, and that happens both on a like you know what are you doing to your intestinal lining and how much. Inflammation will have to be involved in processing that food, and and then you know like how much work does your liver have to do on that food, um, and you know what are you really delivering into your system? You know, is it a good quality food, or is it the food that will require processing, where you have to really tap into your resources, like 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 B vitamin stores in your liver, or um, or. I know, like things that you have to actually detox through liver, and, and, and this will have some degree of inflammation that, that comes with it. Um, so, you know, highly processed foods tend to be um, more irritating to the gut, hence uh, they can still have inflammation. Uh, foods that are cleaner, fresher, less processed tend to be less uh, less likely to, to promote inflammation. Um, there are certain types of fats that we can consume that will impact how our bodies will uh, mount inflammatory responses. Uh, the omega-3 fatty acid example is a, is a very common one. And this is, a, you know, this is actually a very effective way of reducing inflammation in one's body by, I'm going to say, about 20% or so. Uh, and it is, that is done by feeding your immune system um, substrate that will result in formation of weaker inflammatory substances. So if you have, you know, if you do have a, a damage to your tissues that, that, you know, will always be accompanied by some inflammation, um, if you load your body with omega-3 fatty acids, um, you, will not, you will not make as big of a deal over that, that chronic injury site. Um, Glycemic index of the food is also very important. So, um, and the glycemic index of the food has to do with what does your blood sugar level do after you eat something. And if, if your blood sugar level spikes after you eat something, it tends to have a pro-inflammatory uh, effect. Um, and uh, and conversely, if you eat something that doesn't 
cause much spike in uh, in blood glucose level, it is considered less less pro-inflammatory. So, any questions on that part of the lecture? Let's open up a little bit. Can you talk about what, what kinds of foods would be high or low, like dog foods? Kind of yeah, so, so let's talk about dog food, you know, so why is, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't, I don't like bash dog food or anything because I don't want to bash dog food, you know, there's, there's definitely a place um, for dog food in our lives, you know, and, and dog foods have definitely made it very easy for us to have dogs and cats, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, this, this premise of a complete balanced nutrition every meal and, and having, you know, one product that you can use from age one through eight, well, it's it sounds so good. You know, who wouldn't want to believe it? Um, but um, but I feel it's a bit of a false promise. You know, so yes, you know, so it's it's cool to eat. You know, like think of like back in you know high school, you were able to you know to eat a whole pizza, right? <laughs> but not, when you're 40, you really cannot without getting really sick from it or, or getting almost like a hangover from it. So so and this is because you know when you're young you can deal with foods of high glycemic index, but when you're older, you cannot, uh, because you know, everything gets weaker, including your, your digestion. Um, and also, you know, the, uh, the overeating is an inflammatory event, which will send a, a shockwave through the system, and mm -hmm. it'll rattle all the, all the injuries, as in like you feel all your scar tissue that you have accumulated up to that point. So, uh, and there's definitely ways to make dog food less in, Pro-inflammatory, as in, and this has that has to do with you know helping to reduce its glycemic index, as in you know you re, you rehydrate it, you know you make it so it's not dehydrating, um, and dehydration is actually very pro-inflammatory as well. So you mix it half and half with with water, as in for each cup of dry food you dump a cup of cold water even or warm water, um, and uh, and then you can use different types of fiber to uh, to dilute the uh, carbohydrate content, you know, so you can add you know, chopped fruit or, or veggies to the dog food and 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 dilute the richness of it. So, you know, per cubic inch of that food, there is actually less calories coming out of it. Uh, and, you know, you also, like if you use fresh fruits or veggies, you're actually uh, adding a whole bunch of B vitamins which are required for you to make any decent use out of all those carbohydrates going in. So that would be... Um, one example of how to augment the the dog food uh, to make it you know less pro-inflammatory. Um, you know, are raw foods necessarily anti-inflammatory? Well, it depends in if, if a dog has a good enough digestion to deal with it. You know, there's there's dogs that don't really have strong gut uh, to deal with raw foods. Yes, when you have a very young dog that's that's just very very hot that seems to have lots of heat, well, raw foods are very very good for them. But um, but you know, older patients tend to have um, decreased digestive power and and they cannot process they cannot you know cook that meat for themselves before it enters the uh, the small intestines for further processing so um, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not you know like pro like all dog food or all raw food you know there's a uh, in fact I I feel it's not very healthy to eat the same thing over and over again period. so um, yes you know we want we want a routine for our dogs, not for ourselves, but one of the reason for our dogs because it's convenient and it's easy. But um, you know, but within that routine, you, there should be a enough diversity where you don't rely on one set of foods to keep your dog healthy because you know neither people nor dogs are designed to eat that way. And and again, if if, if a, you know if a, I don't know General Meals came up with a a human food formula where you eat bars or cookies and, and that is and it says it's complete nutrition for people, would you be eating it? Or would you trust it is actually delivering what you, what your body needs? Um, you know, so so again I, I think there is a um, part of the the issue with dog food is that you know much money went into making sure that you believe that you cannot really feed your dog without help of of dog food company, mm -hmm. and it's a very strong belief that most people have. Like you know, like is it is it complete? Like well, what am I missing when I'm when I, you know I, I make my dog you know steak and veggies and and brown rice, but I must be missing something in the diet. Well, and and yet you pour that brown stuff, the kibble, the cookies in a, in a bowl, and and it's, it's got it all. 
Uh, doesn't smell good, doesn't look good, <coughs> but somehow it's better than a bunch of fresh food that you just made for your dog. So, you know, sometimes things get said that aren't true, but if they are said <laughs> enough times, they become true. Um, so uh, let's see how paint plays out in in, in real life. So um, the yeah, first. Have one more question, yes. But, um, on the omega three, how mm -hmm. much would you actually give a dog? As much as they can tolerate. You know, eventually, um, when you, you like in the middle of managing geriatric patient, you know, th they can take on a lot of fats because, in fact, they they require them to to deal with the with all the stress in their life, as in, you know, they have to make a lot of inflammatory substances and these require uh, fat as a substrate. So um, the trick is, you know, that you have to deliver fats in a way that doesn't injure the stomach, as in, you know, lead to a stomach upset. Um, and that is usually by um, packing or mixing the, uh, the fats with enough fiber to kind of dilute the richness of the fats, you know. So, so uh, I mean, you, you can put a 50 pound dog on a teaspoon of fish oil twice a day, if you can get it in without stomach upset. And that would be, again, done by using that fish oil as a dressing for the veggies versus like putting a, you know, a, a, a teaspoon of, of fish oil on a, on a bowl of dry food, which is very likely to cause stomach upset. So that's how you deliver it. You know, it's, uh, again, there's a benefit of it, but you cannot break gut in the process because you know, the intestine, you know, the gut is your way in. If you break that, you know, you are you are two steps backwards, you know, on bland diet trying to restore the proper gut, gut function. And, and, you know, and, and older patients cannot really, you know, it's, it's a big hit for them to have to be out of business in their gut for a couple of days, you know, because mm -hmm. so, they have so many ongoing needs. You cannot just, you know, pull that plug on their, on their nutrient intake for a couple of days. But you have to do it because you have to repair the gut the priority is always to restore the gut function. Uh, so, so the quantities uh, again, I, I use I use about you know five thousand milligrams of omega three per fifty pounds of body weight. But this is not really the only type of fat that will be in a in a dog's diet. You know, hey, dog food alone is ten percent fat, but there's a lot of fatty acids right there. Um, you know, and, and I guess I don't really feel that dogs require only 10% of dietary fats in their diet. I, I feel as they get older, they, they probably require up to 20 or even more. Um, so, and it's, and it's really hard to deliver it on top of a dog food. Usually what you have to do is, is uh, you, you pull back on a dog food, you add veggies, and, and then that's what you put the fatty acids on, whether it's, you know, fish oil, Likely could deliver canned sardines, um, eggs, you know, egg yolks, um, avocados, coconut oil, whatever you're going to use to impact the uh, the strength of the inflammation that that that, that is unfolding in, in patient's body. Did that answer your question? Uh, so uh, first case is my own doggy, uh, sweet doggy from Mudville. Uh, thank you, Mudville. Um, it's, a year, it's been a year now. Huh? Has it been a year? I think it was a it was a September lecture of last year. Wow. Yep. And uh, I came here and I was doing my talk and I brought her. Like, she was my foster and I brought her down here <laughs> to the lecture and Adam couldn't take she couldn't take her eyes off of you and then you're like why is this dog staring at me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she's she's a border collie and she's just a uh, very intense. She's dog. taking notes. Is what yeah, she was <laughs> definitely taking some mental notes. Um, but uh. And you know she, she was just I think just very minimized by the by I don't know I, she's a dog that really um, submits to a strong leadership you know so if you like in the middle of a room full of people booming you know she's like oh like, <laughs> 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 um, so anyways you know but she you know she there were some issues with JJ right you know because she wasn't very trusting and and uh, unlike most dogs who will will look away when you stare them down you know she's like oh like we connecting sure you know so <laughs> and perhaps and and she's just like you know she's a very um uh tightly wired dog too you know she's she's a working breed you know very energetic very cerebral like very very smart dog um well you know so i read through the history when i first got her you know she was not a very happy about physical restraint um, you know, they had to drag her to do a physical exam to, to do a, the, the basic blasts that everyone gets, you know, going through a shelter uh, system. 
Um, and uh, you know, when I first met her, you know, she was cool and all, and she was happy, you know, about being close. But you know, you just try to touch her back, and she will rip you apart, you know. So, um, and um, so I think like maybe second or third time I met her, I was able to kind of touch her back, and and there was a lot of heat in it, and and she was just so tense. When you um, say there's a lot of heat, you you physically feel that that part of the body is radiating more heat than the rest of the body, right? Absolutely. And think of having a, a, a back spasm, you know, it's a, that is a, a very short term brace that the body will install in order to protect the spine. You know, again, the spine is not a place in the body where that gets priority as far as everything else can go to hell. You must protect your spine and your central nervous system that houses, you know, well, you just call it, houses your brain and, and, and spinal cord. So, um, so, you know, you bend, something pops, you're like, eh, whoa, well, huge muscle spasm will, will happen um, on, on each side of the injury, and this is to make you unable to move that, that part of the body. Well, contracting the muscle is an energy-consuming uh, reaction, and it requires burning of calories, which, you know, the side effect of it is this heat, you know, so as you pass your hand over dog's back, if they are tensing or keeping something tight, I, I feel it, it's, it's a pretty pronounced um, difference in areas that are not affected and areas that are affected. You know, so you can try it on, on your dog and see if you can pick up any any fluctuations in, in temperature um, as you go down the spine. And then if you do well, once you like, then you start walking your fingers down the back and see if the hot area, as you press on it, you get a flinch, and it is another piece of evidence that you know, there's something wrong with that area of the back and, and it's and it's actually, uh, you know, there's some pain or some guarding behavior. She has a hot spot. She's always warm right here. Mm, I mean, it's not yeah. like hot, hot right now, but it's definitely warmer than the rest of her. Mm. Yeah, this is very common. You know, so She's so as, as you, you know, when you see your dog's age, you know, they become very, they get this you know, skinny fat syndrome where the, the gluteal muscles over the hips and pelvis, you know, get get a, you know, shrink. The, the muscles on the back legs go away. This usually affects the quadriceps muscle, which is the, the, the thigh muscle that, that that we use to bring our knee up, you know, and it's also, I guess it's used to bend the hip as well. Or it's used to propel the, the back leg forward. Well, older dogs don't really do that, you know, they, they walk stiff, you know, so if you don't use the muscle, it goes away. Muscle requires a, a constant uh, nerve stimulation to, to remain the way it is. Otherwise, uh, if you don't have that, um, that, that, that stimulus, that input, by default, muscle will go away. You know, body doesn't want to invest energy into maintaining this muscle because it's costly to, you know, there's, you know, politics of the body is to, um, to conserve energy, really, you know, so um, there's, how we are designed. So, and and but of course, you know, how do you, how do those how do you get those hindquarters forward if you cannot bend the hip and propel the back paw that way? Well, you have to swing the butt around, so the so dogs start to wobble uh, or or fishtail, and and that requires uh, strengthening and uh, and hypertrophy of the lateral lumbar muscle that connect uh, various. Uh, spinal processes of your L1 through L5 to the pelvis. So, so yes, the, 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 it looks like, like very dense, large, warm love handles on a dog. Mm -hmm. And some of them, you know, some of the dogs like will have this coffee table appearance, you know, that they're really flat on their, on their rump. Uh, and that is because the muscle has bubbled out so much that, that is no longer, you know, around, around lower back. It is, Almost mm -hmm. in the flat lower back, um, and you know, and it's like so. It's, so you see a, um, I guess what you see is a um, redistribution of the mass of the muscle mass. You know, so the muscle goes away from parts that, that are moving, and it goes to places where it's needed. You know, for for motion. So yeah, that, that would be, and that would be the area. Um, and of course, you know, lower back is also the place where lots of disc injuries do happen. So this is a commonly a, a very warm area. Um, this is also, I feel, why 
why fleas like older dogs with back problems because they're so hot on their on their rump. Um, so, so you know, fleas also will will pick on weak individuals, which tend to be inflamed individuals, which which means they are sick individuals. You know, parasites are smart; they don't go for the strongest individual in the pack; they go for the weakest. So, um, so back to JJ, you know. So, so yes, she has a, she has a heat right on top of her, um, uh, kind of right behind her shoulder blades, and um, this is also the place where she had her harness looped around, and like one of those like two loop harness with the with the doors all strapped, connecting the, the loops, and and um, and I I felt my like was a little bit tight, you know. So, um, so I took it off, you know. She she relaxed a little bit, you know, but then. It was really no way to touch her for for a couple of weeks, um, mm -hmm. and then um, eventually she allowed some massage, and, and little by little, I, I got less and less sensation from um, uh, from this area. I I also did I use a there's a couple of herbal remedies I use for um, for management of joint disease. Uh, one of them is a um, it's like a glandular uh, preparation. That's made by standard process. It's called musculoskeletal support, and it um, it has you know the it's like a joint supplement with with a boswellia in it. Um, the other one I used for her, and this is you know to provide the body with a building blocks for new connective tissue. So you know so we flood the body with things that it, that it requires to repair a, a damaged tissue. Um, and then I use pain plus, which is a which is another combination of Western anti-inflammatories containing uh, Boswellia, Yucca, uh, MSM, uh, uh, Meadowsweet, Bromelin, and Papain, um, the last two being the digestive enzymes. Um, and she did get several doses of, uh, of Prevacax as well. And it was very, it was only, you know, two or three consecutive nights. Um, that, that is, you know, the people are really apprehensive about using drugs long term, as they should be. You know, it's not good to use drugs long term. But it's great if you can get the desired effect within a short period of time and then and then use something more natural if the problem cannot be completely eradicated. So so if you if you if your dog has acute back injury and you have to use three days of, of aspirin or Prevacax, well it's cool. If if at the end of that three day period, you know, you, you can pull back or or, or you know, just, just a joint support product, or or just massage, or or getting acupuncture once every couple of weeks. But acute crisis, you know, um, like I mentioned, you know, joints don't tend to benefit from inflammation. So so if you notice sign of of re injuries, you know, you want to get on top of it quickly. As in, you know, you turn the heat down. You, you don't <coughs> allow for any you know further progressive damage to a. Um, to the tissues that are already in a, in a bad shape. So she had you know, a few days of, um, of the Prevacax and, and, and now I can, I can really press into her back and you know, she will tighten up at some point. And also I, I'm still not able to pick her up. Really? Is that more uh, trust, emotional? Yeah, but Yes, it, it is trust. As in, she doesn't trust me to maintain her back in a position that is non-painful. Yeah. Um, so you know, and, and I, and I try to scoop her, and she and she gets mouthy, and then she, and this dog really trusts me, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, so I feel that I I'm just not as able to to control how she can hold her spine if she if she's being held, and like you know, and, and her front and her back are waving, you know, it's just, you know, and she will respond to it because she's a smart dog. So she says, hey, like, get away from me. I like you, but I'd like, I don't like to, to pick me up. Um, so, and this was, you know, this is kind of a, a, a young dog situation. We don't really know how old she is. You know, she's probably three or four years old. Um, now? <laughs> she's three or four years old today? Not, well. Like, you think that when, when you met Dolga, or she was only... <laughs> She seems very, very young to me. Oh wow! Um, she lied about her age. She lied about her age. <laughs> we said it was twenty-one and over, and she's <laughs> right. But you know, like all now, I feel she's a, you know, she, she, it's a dog that really, that burns really hot, you know. So, but, but she's not really burned out uh, where I feel, or I think of her as a, um, uh, as a very old dog, which actually brings. 
this other issue, you know, like, you think that if you have a young dog, they can't have joint problems or dental problems? Well, you're wrong, because, you know, you can have very, very young dogs who have really, really bad joint problems or who have horrendous teeth. And, and you're like, well, why are they having old age problems if they're really young? Well, various reasons, you know. So, um, again, perhaps they, their lifestyle is of, of the sort that is really uh, promoting inflammation and degeneration of, of tissues that you only get one set of per lifetime, you know. So, so one can burn out if, if not living a lifestyle that is, that is uh, uh, appropriate to one's uh, constitution. Uh, so an example being uh, the next dog. Uh, I guess we have a, we have Ocean Blue, huh? Who um, who uh, who is a, how old is she? She's like you wrote Sue. She's eleven. All right, cool. All right. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> what are you gonna say she is? So you know her for years now. Yeah, no, she she's uh, she's getting there because you know, and, and with her you can actually see you know, the clouding of her lenses. You you see some degenerative issues in her body like lenticular sclerosis, which tends to happen, which can happen to what? dogs that run hot, you know, when they're when they're young. But you know, <laughs> let's say she's ten. Uh, well, you know, she has had on and off back problems, you know, and 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 these usually like are um, uh, precipitated by by strenuous activity or or. You know, she she's a dog that loves to run, or you know, uh, was the, I think it was agility training that that, that caused a, la a last crisis. Did some agility. Oh, she was her. doing some uh, physical rehab kind of. Kind yeah, which of, I believe was... involved her getting up on her back legs. Yeah, well, bad yeah. idea for her. Like she yeah, doesn't. Yeah, for her, her that's really, agility. Yeah, right. yeah. Her spine doesn't really do well with that, you know. So, uh, so a few sessions of that, and and and, uh, and you have Ocean that's that's, that's hard pack. I think I'm sure she has some some digestive problems, um, like parathyroid retching. Well, what what fixed her? She went through a series of a uh, laser treatment. You're up. Uh, You're up. So using cold laser to um, to improve the healing rate and uh, and and uh, decrease the scar tissue formation. And actually, you know, uh, inflammation. You know what? Can you show on her back when you the flinching? Yeah. And this actually, you told me she lays down like this because of the pain in her back, and this is her way of. Yeah, this she's also doing this because she's hot, so she's she's a. Uh, oh, cooling. She is, uh, she is doing a, a thermal venting through the floor, you know. So you will see this in a, in young and old dogs that, that are inflamed. You know, they they want to they are cool seeking and they are heat averse because they That's are right. so hot already. And it's not because they're in the full sun. It could be the cloudiest rainy day and they still run hot mm -hmm. because it is a uh, it is a a very internal heat. Uh, you know, we call it hot flashes, I guess, or, yeah. or inflammation. So, with Ocean, uh, when you walk, let's see if we can feel any heat in her spine. You can take Tammy because you can definitely feel it on Tammy. She's not real hot right now, but oh. she does have one spot on this one. Yeah, sure. Uh, see if we can, we can maybe uh, show her at the next uh, Ocean's not showing section. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. Where there she that? goes, her flinching. So, uh, so Ocean had a very sore spot at her T10, T11, mm -hmm. which, you know, if you dig your fingers deep enough, you will start seeing um, the fasciculation of the muscle, as in, like, she feels like there is a horse fly biting her, uh, and it is caused by um, activation of, of nerve endings, or, um, and, uh, and her trying to shake off that stimulus that is causing her pain. Um, but all in all, she actually is not doing too badly today. Yeah. But yeah, you know, she does have that mid uh, to upper back um, flinching still. But, uh, you know, hey, like she's on her pain plus and taking her supplements and, mm -hmm. and nothing strange has happened the last few days, you know, and that is enough to uh, stabilize the spine and, and uh, make her feel not so terrible. Is pain something that is, that is constant all the time? No, it isn't. Um, you know, so you could be very, very painful one day, but but completely fine the next day, and vice versa. Um, so, so what fixed uh, Ocean? So she went through a series of a uh, of laser uh, called laser therapy, which again is, is aimed at a, at a, 
improving the healing rate, as in stabilizing the injury. Um, she was on gabapentin, it worked pretty well for her. Um, <coughs> then you guys have you started to, to do a gabapentin and tramadol uh, mm -hmm. rotation. Uh, she was on pain plus and she was on carprofen, which is a remedial. Um, and it, all of these things help to uh, low, uh, subdue inflammation, reduce the pain. Eventually, within what two or three weeks, she has stabilized to the almost to the point where she was before mm -hmm. that re injury. Yeah, so, so again, flares will happen. They will happen. You know, there's unless they just, they will happen. There's there's really no way around it unless you have a very very um, well cushioned environment for your dog. You know, these these these. Well, you know, and of course, like you know, these things do happen. Be because the dogs are doing things that are in their lifestyle, you know, like they have to do that steep staircase and into the mm -hmm. school house, you know, that, and there's and, and you you know you cannot afford to move to the country into a ranch house that's all flat. <laughs> so so some things really cannot change about the environment. So their bodies are subjected to to the same type of stress over and over again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like carpal tunnel syndrome, but in their back. So, um, so when she does when she does have a flare flare up, if she slips on the stairs or something like that happens, we just take a few steps back to previous levels of treatment. Right. For a gabapentin again. Oh, we don't wait to weeks. see if she has pain. We we proactively address it so that it doesn't get worse. Yeah, you anticipate. So you know, if you yeah. see her, like if you take her to Fort Panson and she spills it down the down the cliff, well. You know, she won't be feeling great the next day, so you should do something about it that night. And that is to make sure she doesn't swell up in her joints overnight, which is what her body would tell her to do. So this is where you are really messing with nature. You are using suppressive medications for a sake of, of you know, of, of pain reduction and, and actually quicker healing. You know, uh, our bodies were designed a certain way, but they were designed in this way many, many millions of years ago, and perhaps different stressors. Um, and perhaps, I guess, you know, these things were, these things happened because, you know, in, in some way, you know, the, you know having pain or, or, or joints going to, to crap, you know, is, is good perhaps for a survival of the pack, you know, perhaps at some point, older individuals, you know, should be hunted down by lions and eaten, right? <laughs> One could say. Well, anyways, you know, we don't think so. We think we should have, you know, we should have really, you know, awesome golden years for our older patients, be they human or, or dogs. And we have to kind of fight the nature a little bit on, on the aging process. Yeah, so, playing God, if you will. Um, uh, another one is a very young dog. Uh, Daisy uh, was a three-year-old year uh, female state miniature poodle. And, and uh, you know, the I, I saw her like a month ago or so, and, and um and 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 the owner is like, you know, this dog is really lazy. You know, all she wants to do is is, is a is sleep on a couch. You know, she's horrible and walks. Um, doesn't really like to be picked up. Um, nah, but she doesn't really want to. You know, we had to coax her together in a car. But you know, she 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 gets really upset when I try to pick her up. Um, and and the dog looked like a twelve year old, uh, like cushionoid dog that I oftentimes see. You know. Like very little hair on top of the back, um, all those dark spots. You know, it's called Casanova's cus cutis. Um, um, panting all the time, very heat and intolerant, and back that was just so tense and so flinchy. Um, so I'm like, well, hey, th I know this is a this is a a very young dog, but what if you know that, that event at the one year of age where you saw your dog collide with a much bigger dog and your dog yelled, did create a um, a rip, and and now your dog has been paying for for past two years, um, you know. So so how how do I prove my theory? Well, I I treat what I think is a problem. So you know, so the dog went through a series of of. Um, and I'm sure I, I kind of fixed up her diet, of course, you know, like I put her on, on more fresh foods. It was a mix of, a, of, of dog food and soft dog food and, and, and a, like a simple two ingredient meat and veggie stir fried applied on top of the dog food. Uh, she went on pain plus. Uh, she had a series of four laser treatments. Um, on her did a back massage twice a day for five minutes. 
so I was told. Um, and uh, and you know, and, and the dog seemed better. You know, she seemed more happy, but not really hundred percent. So so I went for. So I said, well, you know, hey, why don't we just like, kind of hit the reset button on this on this back pain thing and do a seven day of, of pelvic axe and and uh, and we did that and and the dog started to run again, you know. Oh, wow. So um, and she, oh, oh, the dog was also very heavy, but you know, she continues to lose weight because she's actually able to. She she was gaining weight. She went from you know twelve pounds at at a at an adult age of of one year. To 17 pounds by the time she was two years old, and mm -hmm. like really like bulbous belly too, you know. So eating a quarter cup of dry dog food twice a day, which is not a lot of food, you know. So something just didn't add up, you know. So uh, and this will happen, you know, to older patients. You know, it's a it's very it's very insidious how they minimize their motions in their body and hence reduce their caloric requirement to move their bodies around. And and if you don't if you don't adjust the the, uh, the caloric intake, well, you end up with a um, with chronic overfeeding, which leads to obesity, which further puts stress on the on a skeleton. So, so Daisy, seven days of of perfect hacks, You know, she's a new dog. She's running. She she's barking. She's attacking other dogs, which she's never done. You know, there's a really good step to her to her step. You know, she's no longer lazy. She she is no longer panting. Um, and uh, and again, this was achieved by you know a hitting hitting a reset button with Previcax, um, physical therapy, which helps through the healing process in the back. Um, you know, nutrition that is that delivers uh, um, building blocks necessary for for completing of the um, of the healing process at the site of inflammation, which was which was multiple places in her back. Uh, and the last one is uh, is the example of of, a, of bad teeth, you know. So um, I see a lot of patients that have chronic bad um, skin and ears, and and uh, and they and they dig at their face and they chew at their feet and and chew at their the, their tail base or anal area, uh, armpits, uh, chest. You know, the, the hair is very dry, dull. They are very flaky. The feet are very dry. Um, you know, there is a Sign of a chronic maldigestion um, of, of of food, you know, so uh, or, or not being able to process food properly. So and sure enough, you know, the, I asked the owner what's happened. You know, this doggy doesn't really have very strong digestion. Any little alterations on the diet, you know, leads to to loose stools, and the stools aren't really great to begin with, you know. So, um, so well, so anyways, I kind of do my IBD spiel and you know, put the dog on. Uh, it was like a lightly cooked raw foods mixed half and half with veggies, uh, with digestive enzyme and, and Chinese herbal, um, and maybe some. I think they'll get to go on Thailand powder, which is uh, like a type of antibiotic that is used to treat uh, IBD, as in bring down inflammation and actually allow for a proper digestion. So, so a couple of weeks later, you know, the dog is not no longer chewing at, at its at its skin. You know, the skin looks visibly more shiny and, and, and softer. Feet are getting darker versus like you know previously they were kind of gray and ashy, um, but the dog still has really red eyes and really red ears, um, and and it's digging at its face. Well, and uh, I look in the mouth and and it's not pretty in there. And again, this is a very young dog with with horrendous horrendous periodontal disease, um, very early in, um, in in his life, you know and. And just like joints, you know, it's not a pretty story because, you know, just like with joints, you know, you only get one set of teeth per lifetime. So when they are damaged mm -hmm. past certain point, the only thing, the only practical thing you could do is really to pull those bad teeth out. Otherwise, they are tremendous sources of inflammation and they're completely unusable. Dogs cannot really put any pressure on them because they, they hurt so badly. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, it because they are digging at their face. So you know, and this owner was con convinced that you know the dog had allergies. You know, first they were generalized, but then they just they were just spatial allergies. Well, guess what? The Benadryl didn't really work for the dog. Um, what did work, you know, was a course of antibiotics, which when the dogs the red the redness in the eyes went away, the digging at the face and ears went away. Um, however, he relapsed after I stopped the antibiotics after seven days, um, and then. Um, I went to town in front of his mouth and pulled a lot of teeth and mm -hmm. and 
was the dog happy afterwards? Well, not immediately afterwards, but <laughs> a week later, uh, it was a happy dog. And this is, you know, kind of the story of many, many mad little dogs. They come in with, mm -hmm. you know, those twelve-year-old toy breeds coming in with just rotten mouths, you know, and For and, and they all look cushionoid. They all look, they're, they're all bald and, you know, this very one heavy. came in now. It's true. It's yeah. True. Right. You no, know, it's yeah. I'd say like you know, half of them come in like that, you know, and mm -hmm. then some of them lose their teeth and and are they worse for it? No, they eat just fine. They they love their dry food, you know, dog food, their homemade diets, even the mm -hmm. free ground raw food. There's no problem eating those foods because these foods don't really require teeth, you know. That is kind of the, the, the like part of the raw deal on, on getting uh, domesticated by dogs is that they aren't really given foods that challenge their teeth or or, or, or they aren't fed in a way where they have to use their teeth to, to chew things up. It is all pre-chewed for them or, or made into a little cookie. Well, uh, as the story goes, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. So, uh, after several years of, of nothing but food residue on your teeth and no use of your teeth, you end up with, with bad gingivitis and periodontal disease. And once the gum line slips past the the neck of the tooth and you have exposed dentin, it is a it is a very you're like on a on a fast track to get dental infection and and um, and lose the tooth. So. Uh, so you know, and, and once the, the, the teeth are damaged to that extent, the, there is really no there is really no point of, of keeping them. Um, you know, and I wish again, I wish the, the standard was better for for animal dentistry, where we can do root canals more easily, you know, or or, or bundling, or or trying to you know like seal the dentin at the level of the of the neck, you know, where where the root is exposed. But you know, all of this stuff. Has to happen under general anesthesia, and, and people don't really like to keep their dogs under anesthesia, and, and it's very costly because, as opposed to you know, people just sitting there and getting local and having their root canal done, is, or or their bonding done, or, or crown put on. So, also, you know, dogs won't, you know, stop using the part of the mouth or rinse their mouth with saline after you, you know, spend two hours and and whole, whole bunch of work on 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 the on the two days trying to fix, you know, so. So bad teeth need to come out, and that is again, uh, having dental infections will make it very very difficult for you to manage joint inflammation in your in your ger geriatric dog. So your homework is to go home and look in your dog's mouth, smell it, uh, take a pen or your nail and tap on a teeth and see what happens. Um, also look at the uh, the upper carnasal teeth, the, those big white chewing teeth, and see if they if they are actually fractured. If there's a enamel slab fracture and there's exposure of the dentin underneath that this happens very often to dogs because um, because most dogs the only type of bone they get is a knuckle bone uh, which is uh, it was just not fair you know to give a dog a, a knuckle bone as in a, a, a piece of cow femur because it is very strong bone and um, and, uh, and dogs tend to chip their teeth on it. Oh, a question about that. Okay. Sure. So my dog has a bit of a chip down here, and it's probably because of that. Mm -hmm. But she is still eating, and if she gets a hold of somebody else's bone, because I've mm -hmm. talked to her on her bones, she will chew right on that tooth, and she Excellent. eats food on it. So does that tooth need to come out? Not necessarily. You know, so if the and of course the slab fractures can, can happen right at the tip of the tooth, where you just break right off the, the tip. tip. Yeah, you know. So if maybe there's some like browner bone under like right mm -hmm. at the at the side of the the chip you know mm -hmm. versus like a whole slab a whole side of the tooth is gone and and you have this subgingival fracture where that that, that slab of enamel uh, was broken off like well below the gum line and then you really have a raw dentin just attracting all that food residue right. and 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 uh, you know very quick um covering with with dental tartar um yeah, you know, if, and if you, I guess if you, um, this is also a very good test um, to see how painful the, your dog's teeth are, you know, like, are they really able to use those teeth? Mm -hmm. As in, you give them a bully stick or, or pig's ear or rawhide, and, you know, if, it, if they can do it, if they have no dental problems, they'll, they will use their teeth and actually clean their teeth pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, JJ came with three bad dental tartar. First night I had her. She had three raw chicken drumsticks, 
and afterwards she had a little turn on her canine teeth, but none on the side teeth. So it only took one one whole food meal to clean the teeth. She's so um so so again, um um just to before we open it up for discussion, um when you have if you have an old dog, your the quality of of a life of your dog will depend on your ability to manage um inflammation in his or her joints and um and your ability to keep the teeth in a decent order, um as in not infected. And you said something about redness in the eyes. So that's a, a symptom of pain. Is it specifically inflammation in the mouth, or is it just pain? And you have to identify where that is. Well, that is the sign of inflammation. You have red eyes. Um, you know, in Chinese medicine, red eyes mean means liver heat. That would be like if you were intoxicated, or if you have a lot of inflammation that that your liver is is trying to detox, you know, so, and just having infection does put a, a tremendous inflammatory load on your liver, which has to, you know, clean up all those inflammatory substances. Um, but, uh, you know, where are eyes, but just above the teeth, you know, and, and the dental roots are in the mouth, they are in a sinus. And, you know, we're talking, you know, very short distances from, from the eyes. And the redness, well, you know, I guess you have a localized inflammation. Uh, in the head, and and then if you add digging at the face, or sometimes pulling at the eye, well, this will this will lead to uh, conjunctivitis. Mm -hmm. oh. And the other, I see that in in a in a in a brachycephalic dogs, they also get this like very pronounced um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, skin fold dermatitis, mm -hmm. more so than what they had when they were younger, before the dental issues. Um, so then, um, so so and, you know it, it's a you know whether you have a dog that's that's three or five years old or whether they you know they're, they're 10, 11, 12, they're like I guess no one's really immune from those problems and and again be, because of the way we feed our dogs those days you know, there are definitely front to dental disease. Is there pain going on here? <laughs> no, it's no. a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, well, but this actually brings a, a good point to the floor, which is, you know, how, you know, how some some individuals are very sensitive about pain, and they they will take every opportunity to express it, and some will be very, very like there is nothing wrong with me, or actually like don't touch me. They, they'll get very snappy, very apprehensive about being approached. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is a this has to do with one's personality, as in like you know, do you trust? That if you're painful, someone's going to help you. Well, in this in this case, you should you know make a big fuss over that and and get everyone to look at you and help you. Or do you believe that um, you know being painful is something that you, you should hide because if you don't, you will be singled out and attacked for it. You know. So mm -hmm. and this you know this will be based on you know personality type and and also you know the dog's experiences. You know, the dog didn't experience many nice things throughout his or her life, they won't be, you know, they won't be very um, uh, good about, you know, expressing the pain. They try to hide it. Wow. So, um, express it. so that is expression of pain. Right. And, and this, you know, just to, like, you know, how do we clean up some symptoms of pain? You know, what do we do about stomach pain or stomach or indigestion? Well, you know, we put our doggies on blander diets, even for a couple of days. So, so simplify. Like, again, the, 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 uh, the goal is to Restore the gut function and 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 restore the integrity of the mucous membrane that li that line our gut from the mouth to our butt. You know, so you need to repair all those ribs. So you, you pull back to the simplest possible diet that requires very little processing and very little digestive juice, which you know can be pretty scalding. And that is your basic chicken and rice diet, um, or or a turkey and oatmeal diet, or. So you know, are you saying if the dog was so my dog, he's now on raw food, like whole turkey grind and stuff. Uh -huh. He always has mucus coming out. He's had anal gland issues. And he'll now like do like, I don't know, it's hiccups or heartburn. He's like, and he'll constantly like, kind of like, he wants to swallow, like, like, 
like the whole like yeah. for five minutes. Yeah. So. Well, what 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 do you call it when it happens to a person? Giggles. Yeah. Or, or nausea, right? Like, it's, it's nausea, right? Like you know, it's like a like when you when you drooling, it is like you're trying to lube yourself up because you know what that, that burning stomach acid is about to to come up your throat and you and you're gonna spill it, you know. So so like you're trying to so the mucus membrane started cranking, trying to prevent yourself by producing mucus. Um, and you know, is it a and your know, raw turkey grind is great, you know, for most dogs, but you know, it, it is like you eating sushi twice a day for like, all the time. <laughs> he eats like emu and stuff, <coughs> like just different raw meat with like pumpkin and some veggies. So I don't know if that's like just too complicated for him. Well, well, it sounds like it. You know, what you what you're uh, uh, describing as symptoms of dysfunction, you know, indicate that that you know perhaps 20% of his diet should not be what you're feeding him. Perhaps you know. What I recommend to uh, to uh, raw food feeders is that, uh, and, and I'm one of them, you know, is that, like, think of how dogs eat, and and again, there's a reason why dogs live with us because they really like to eat the way we eat, and and how about you know, like when you when you wake up and it's really cold and drizzly, and if you like in West Portland, it's like always cold, you know, <laughs> like do you really want to eat a a bunch of you know pretty rich cold meat? Is it really something that's that's very appealing to you? Or how about you get some more oatmeal and some yogurt and some fruit in your body and, and you actually, you know, it and and this will help you to warm up, to, to get yourself to like a daytime level of activity. Well at night, you know, you've been up all day running around, you know, the sun you know came up, you were at four fronts and all day long, you know, running around, you know, you come back home, you're like Psh. Sweating hot, and your dog is panting all the time. Well, this is a perfect time to do raw food feeding. This is a very nice, cooling meal for a dog, and and it'll help to bring the the heat down. And you know, and you have to cool down, otherwise it's really hard to fall asleep. Mm. So, so breakfast and dinner. Raw food is great for dinner. Uh, for breakfast, unless you live in a very hot climate, you should maybe eat a little bit warming foods. Even though the dog is always hot, because he's like just always he wants to be on the tile like the whole time, all day, every day. Or even at night, sometimes he just chooses to like sleep on the floor or tile yeah. versus his bed. Very expensive bed. Mm -hmm. Sleep on yeah. it. You don't feel what it costs. Yeah, dogs really don't care. <laughs> that it feels good or it doesn't. Um, well, but does the dog have other inflammatory problems um, that that uh, that manifest as as heat intolerance or, or running hot all the time? And again, like of the uh, of the body, be like, well, a raw food is a, is a perfect remedy for him, and maybe it is. But you know, like the remedy shouldn't injure your stomach in the process. Mm -hmm. And it happens, you know, like hey, like you don't want pain, and you take aspirin. Well, guess what? You get heartburn from it. You know, you you actually benefit it because your joints don't don't hurt anymore. But you know, there's you know there's a price sticker to any. To, th there are consequences to actions. Anything that you do, you know, there is a there is a reaction to it, right? So would you say change it like chicken and rice in the morning and raw turkey at night? Yeah, well, again, maybe you need to make the food a bit more bland and and, and softer on a stomach lining, uh, right. as in you know, you add more soft oatmeal to it, o or more vegetables or fruit. You know, I guess you have to add. You know, the carbs you have to watch because you know carbs are very uh, energy dense. You know, so if you if you mix your dog's food half and half with with oatmeal, and the dog doesn't burn all those calories from oatmeal, right, right. it's gonna be a heavy dog in a couple right. of months. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and you don't want that. So, um, but yeah, so, something's not jiving with with this dog's stomach about you know about the diet. Um, that is he very uh, like you know? Do you see pika, which is eating of inappropriate objects, as in grass and fiber and other things or dirt? No, not really. Okay. You see, Doctor Taylor. <laughs> and how old is he? He's nine. He's a golden retriever. He lost like ten pounds. He's now like at eighty. I got him at like. Yeah. Well, and this is you know like this is kind of this shows you how consumptive the heat is. You know how 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 much it costs you to uh, run hot all the time. Yeah. Like you know back in the days like when you had when you had like tuberculosis you know it was kind of inflammation in your lungs 
the vehicle is consumption because you would just melt away. Mm. Like you would mm. lose all your all your body stores because inflammation is very very costly. And you're know, nine years old. There are other inflammatory issues going on than that, so that perhaps you know, just test, like just itchy all the time. And then so allergy test is allergic to like lamb and beef, so we don't eat any of that. Mm -hmm. Just chicken, turkey, and pork, and maybe rabbit. I don't know. So like we stay away from everything that he's tested positive for, but he's still like, and we try Claritin, Benadryl, Allegra. Well, if he was if he was allergic, those things would have helped him. Right. So no. Uh, well, yeah. This is actually very very common, and and um, this is common, and actually something that that can come on later in dog's life. Um, as in, you know, if you overload your ability to digest foods, you will end up with inflammation in the gut and, uh, and malabsorption of things, which um, which leads to usually very poor coat quality and, and dry skin, which then a dog wants to rip off. Um, and there, there'll be, you know, so the, so the basic condition is deficiency. Like, you know, you have cold, dry dogs with really, you know, dry feet, bad nails. Um, the, you know, and then like the, 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 the cells slough off, the cells die and and they um, induce inflammation, so there's secondary heat. Um, but you know, with this dog, I would worry about, you know, the food that he eats is of very low glycemic index, but it is still overwhelming to him. And it's, and it's very clear because it's giving him nausea. And this is where I would do, um, like I, I would, Lightly cook the raw food. I would add, you know, <coughs> of, I would probably add equal volume of vegetables to the dog's wow. food, you know. So, and all this is to make this. I think that food is too rich for him. Yeah. And it's a great food. And and six years ago, this would be like an awesome, awesome all-around diet. But now it is. Th this is not the same dog as as he was, you know, when he was young. So you know you. you and it's not like, you know, yeah, the dog food back tells you it's from like ages one through seven, but you know, everyone ages differently. Some some dogs are really great at ten years of age, you know, some some dogs look ancient at five years of age. So you really have to modify the diet uh, based on, on your dog's needs. And they do change all the time and they and they vary based on what they do every day, where they live, you know, what they're subjected to, like the stressors that are applied to their bodies, you know, it's uh, you have to have a right fuel for each type of body and the activity that the body is performing. So he also doesn't digest well. Like he eats blueberries, he poop out blueberries. I mean, they're just complete blueberries. Right. Or peas and carrots come out looking just like peas and carrots. Yeah. Well, and this kind of tells you about you know how quickly his gut tries to purge things because it's just being overwhelmed. So okay. when you overeat, you end up purging. Again, eat, eat a whole size of pipe, it'll be out of you like within an hour. You know? So <laughs> not because there's something wrong about pizza, it's because you've taken in more than you can handle. Okay. Uh, so so again, this dog it is the food is too rich and it is when you overeat it is a de, de facto inflammatory event. Um, it, it is just the same as if you were to eat something that, that is actually irritating to you. Mm -hmm. um, and the result is a, a very quick movement of things from the intestines, and you know, and very sometimes very poor quality of the of the, of the poops, and uh, and then you know all that four dollars a pound food. Eight is, dollars. Oh, yeah, <laughs> pound, you know, it's, it's out, you know, Emu you know, is even know, more. A very small portion of it was, was utilized. You know, so so by the, by doing the the food, you actually you actually prevent inflammation and increase absorption. So so perhaps your dog would be okay with eating half of that food that you're giving him mix of you know well cooked and ground vegetables like peas and carrots or or just cook them. Yeah. And, 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 uh, yeah and it sounds like maybe also this doggy doesn't really have enough digestive energy to do the cooking of the meat. Um, and um, and it needs to be lightly cooked, as in you know you take the chill off. You know you put it in the microwave for 30 to 60 seconds, okay. so it's no longer cold. Okay. And, and and I guess most of the pink is gone. Okay. It's not like browning it or anything. It's just really 
you know, like think of like eating cold food all the time. It's actually yeah. not good for your stomach yeah. to eat cold food. So, um, yes. So I have a question about pain that is may not be physical and maybe this is behavioral, psychological. Yes. Uh, I have my dog, Jog, mm -hmm. and Stray, and uh, he's pretty flexible, you know, mm -hmm. he did this uh, back thing. It seems like nothing's wrong, mm -hmm. however, I'm talking about, you know, low tolerance of pain. The other day, he's walking and he just hit his leg on the side of uh, like a bathroom door. It doesn't hide it. And he goes, ah! Oh, and then, um, mm -hmm. of course, how we lift him, he goes, ah! Mm -hmm. Depends. And it's almost as if he's anticipating pain. Something bad happening. Yeah. And, and I, I know that he's been probably injured before. <laughs> Because he's a cricket mouth, mm -hmm. his jaw was broken. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you know, hard evidence. And I'm just wondering, just you know, have you ever encountered dogs that are Making, like that? And oh, he totally, has totally. done yeah. exam here, mm -hmm. and you know, blood shot, you know, and all that stuff. He's completely fine. Yes. He's very well. Calm. That's that's because he knows that making a pass when when a, <laughs> a technician and vet are. Are doing this, you know, it doesn't get him anything, and he has conditioned you to be to be very careful about how you pick him up and what happens. You know, he's like, well, uh, this is this is, you know, it, it, this has worked for this dog. This is which is why he's doing it. You know, like you poke him and he's like, ah, and you're like, oh my god, like let's be him off. Yeah, I bet there is some type of pain underneath it, as in like if you. If you if you pick him up too roughly or too quickly, you know there is a maybe like you are causing a shift in his spine to the point where there is a, a a sharp pain, and he knows it. So so the second you know he feels out of control, he makes a huge fuss over that. I'm suddenly kidding him. You know, how does how does he know that you're not like poking him? You know, so it's a again it, it's something that probably worked for this dog in the past. And he's using it to protect himself. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, maybe. Well, now that you cannot be painful if you hit your like elbow against something. It's, so he was just like this, and no, it was just you know. Yeah. And then we roll uh, him around, we search everywhere, everything is you know. Yeah, yeah. You know. So this is an exaggerated response to a stimulus, right? So it's being yeah. hypersensitive. Um, just the regulation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, but hey, but then he's then he's being examined, and it's not that's not the way he is. So how is he really? Uh, you know, so he is just like you know we like we can be one way with with a bunch of people and very different way with another bunch of people, right? And that is we do it because it works for us in those situations. Um, dogs have very complex psyche as well. We think they're dumb, but they're not. Um, Oftentimes, you know, I guess, you know, you, sometimes you can see behavioral patterns because, you know, things keep repeating, you know, like the same thing. They, they, they tend to react the same way to things. And, and uh, then you, you're like, well, I, I just won't buy it because, you know, he's going to cry when I try to pick him up, you know, and it's, it's just not worth it. So, um, but, you know, you know, like if you just have something has to happen, you just grab him, you know, it's happening. Like you have to be very confident and just go for it. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, kind of, kind of like on the, on the back and, and kicking and screaming and peeing and pooping and, um, and everything else that goes with it. So, which is really not good for him. It is not good for him to do this. You know, again, it, it works for him, or he thinks it works for him on some level, but it is not a very healthy uh, expression of, of social trust. <laughs> uh, well, so yeah. he feels threatened by other dogs. That is, that is a, yeah, pretty good. So again, some think happened in the past, perhaps that that made him believe that every dog is out to get him. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Even know we're touching it. So when you were talking about getting the dog on, you know, if they had pain, getting them on medications like the gabapentin and the Rimadil. So if you have a dog that you know has a condition, like she's got bulging discs, and she was on medication and it ran out, and no one told me to refill, and I let it lapse, and she had a horrible episode, and we ended up 
an emergency vet. It was really awful. Mm -hmm. And so now she's on that stuff for maintenance. This is a 14 year old dog. Like, am I worried that that stuff is going to be so hard on her kidneys and her liver? Because she's taking that stuff every day. Or what? What is what is worse, being in constant pain or or risking side effects of medication? Well, this is it. The pain was awful. She wouldn't eat. She wouldn't drink. She wouldn't move. You know, no. okay. He's just little. Well, and, and, and yes, you know, being on chronic medications like like carfrofen and gabapentin can have side effects. Um, hence, you have to you know make sure that the organs are are keeping up with it and, and everything is happy. And and of course, like you know, the dog is eating now, so. So on some level, there's really no side effects to it. Yeah, she's um, doing fine on them, but I just, you know, I just worry because of her, because of her age. It's it's a it's a very common worry, but I feel I feel it's, you know, it is somewhat. Betrayal. Yeah, you know, it is really uh, going for lesser of two evils. You know, yes, you are, you really have to be on the lookout for any side effects to a very powerful remedy that you're using to erase the consequences of being old yeah. and having been injured. Probably many many times, it, you know. Yes, but again, what what is what are your options? You have a dog that is really really painful and, and cannot eat. How long how long will she last? <laughs> well, that's like the that. thing. Yeah. Well, versus like she's how taking. How long will I last watching the dog like that? It's really no, no, no. You you, you will say poor quality of life. You know, you know, this is, you're gonna call it. You know, so um, versus again, like I have not really have any side effects. It doesn't. She's been fine on it. I haven't noticed anything. And the same with carprofen, it's going to have, you know, if it doesn't have side effects right away and you're really looking out for them and pull back on a dose when they are happening or, you know, do some uh, countermeasures like some Pepsid or some blunder diet when stomach is acting up mm. due to those medications, well, you know, you, you are compensating. So I give her Pepsid on a regular basis. I would, oh. I've had seven foster dogs with Mucco and I would say five out of the seven, they all do this like... <sighs> retching kind of thing and the very first mutt bill dog I had the vet told me cut the pepsid into quarters and give them a quarter tab away from all their other meds if they're on other meds and it went away and it was, like a a charm, right? it was a miracle it's like and so she did, she did that when I got her yeah. and so they said just not near the gabapentin so the gabapentin and the women will go with the food and mm -hmm. I give her um, the, the quarter tab of pepsid just before bed with yeah. a tiny little piece of turkey and she doesn't do that and I also worry because her arthritis is in her neck and I just felt like that movement that she was doing when she was gagging oh, was really totally. stressing out her, yeah. her cervical spines. And you know, and she was trying to push something that wasn't even there. Like there, there's, there is no, no benefit to the, to that uh, oh. symptom that she was showing. There, there was no benefit to her retching. Right. Uh, so, so yes, you use a very inexpensive, zero side effect uh, remedy to contract a, not just side effect to, to carpal You know, everyone who is old enough will, will have enough stress in their life. To have occasional heartburn, yeah. if not constant heartburn. She's no stress. Like well, <laughs> she's <laughs> under stress because she her body is because aging, body, and yeah. that is it's your body stress. aging is stressful mm -hmm. to you because again it comes with its um, share of aches and pains. Yeah, um, I and mean, she does. I mean, yeah, it definitely has that. She's very aware. So to answer the question, yeah, it's it is, and this is a very clear example of. You know, if your goal is a maximum quality of life, you will go for for life on medication with with some small side effects that you can compensate for versus life and horrible pain that you aren't doing anything about. Mm -hmm. I was also going to ask you about the um, the uh, omega threes. Uh -huh. So with Put the older dogs, I worry space. about them developing pancreatitis and having too much fat in their diet. So, you know, I feed her the happy dog that Mutt feeds the dog, and I go back and forth between turkey and beef as the mix that I put in with it. Um, so she doesn't have a huge amount of variety, and she doesn't really like a lot of other foods, but I just worry, like, because I have thought about putting ads in some of the extra stuff, but I'm worried about the development of pancreatitis or something. I mean, how much... What I have to give her to really make her so sick like that. Uh, a lot. You have to give her enough to um, to to really cause enteritis, which is inflammation of a small intestine. It's a, it's a very heavy overload of a small intestine. Um, and yes, it is triggered by heavy foods usually. Um, so she's on. I mean, all the stuff I'm mixing in. It's all like 93% fat free. And yeah, you know, but like if, if she eats a cake, she will get pancreatitis. It's not like you have to eat fat to get it. Right. 
So it's not it's not really if you know if you need to deliver fat because it has beneficial uh, impact on her, well, piggyback it on something that's not rich at all, which is you know put that dressing on a salad, right. put that fish oil on a bunch of broccoli, you know, right. put that avocado with a bunch of chopped apples and pears, and that way she gets you know lots of fatty acids, but when you do a final analysis, the, the concentration of those fats is not to the point where she would be overwhelmed by them. Mm -hmm. so. I'm actually glad you brought up the topic because your dog is older than mine. He's nine years old, but he's on the same cocktail of, you know, yeah, anti-pain yeah. meds for, he could probably have both of his knees repaired. He could probably have a left hip replacement, but I, I say to myself, you know, he's nine years old. If he were three, I might consider that, but he is a pound puppy. And I have to ask myself, I said, he's nine, he'll probably never get off his carcofen, you know, because when he has, you know, enteritis, we go blind die, we go, you know, carcofen could be like irritating his stomach. You see how slowly he moves over three days span. We're like, well, we know the effect of carcofen is giving. Because then I talked to my vet and, and she's like, well, you know, we can do, you know, if you're worried about her liver or her kidneys, you know, we can do a monitoring test for that. But at the same time, you know, do you want, you know, your, your pound puppy to be able to go for his daily walks, yeah. you know, up and down a flight of stairs? Uh, and, you know, do you think, do you think carproven is the worst thing that, that can hit the liver? No. Uh, like, no. what about, you know, think of what's in dog food and how heavy that hits the liver. Mm. So, you know, carproven is, is not that bad. You know, the, the, those pain medications, you know, like think of young athletes, human athletes that, that you know, had their, and, you know, they, they, they injure very early in life, you know, like if you put lots of stress on your body, you know, you injure and, you know, like football players are on, on carprofen and, and gabapentin from the time they're retired at 25 for the rest of their life. And, and yet they, you know, they take their liver supplements and they do their cleanses and they eat well and they are okay with it. So, so the body can take a decent amount of stress uh, and, and, and be okay with it. Um, if you control the, the pain and the only thing that you have to worry about is having to chop up that the pain medication, well, it's not so bad. Having huge amounts of pain is a really heavy load on your body. It, 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 it induces a tremendous amount of inflammatory load on the liver too. So, um, so again, like, what is the uh, the lesser of two evils? Um, hey, like, if, if if there was no pain medications, what you know, the dog would be dead. Like, you know, <laughs> it would be so unhappy. There there would be enough injuries that like the dog would be so painful that the gut is no longer functioning and the dog goes off food. Mm -hmm. And is unable to get up, you know. So, so you know, this, it, yeah, the, the carprofen gabapentin is a is a is it's a very 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 common combo for people with lower back pain, yep. and they do just fine with it. And after Meyer, the folks who have smaller size dogs who aren't eating five pounds, who can take you know a whole pill, he's you know put in his breakfast or put in his dinner. Yeah. You know, must of us, I'm going. Yep. Love you, and I want to keep you. Yeah, yeah. All her meds go into her food, and she just loves her food. She doesn't even know it's her food. Anymore. Yep, so excellent. Thankfully, it's not an issue. So a happy, happy patient, happy intestines, and you have your way in to keep them happy. You know, they they go off of meds. You know, they get all stomachy and and loose poopy and and heartburny, and all of a sudden they can smell everything that's weird in that food. You know, and you have a crisis. It's it's really hard to kind of jumpstart patients once they go into crisis, it's like, you know, like your dog getting off meds and, and eventually the, like it didn't happen all of a sudden, right? Like, you know, several days afterwards, like something popped again and there was a, a severe pain that just derailed everything Sounds and made the dog feel that, that she was dead, you know, so. Um, and she does great. Like, she doesn't see or hear very well, but she really likes to go for her walks. But, you know, I, and I also am very good about not overdoing it. Like, I don't yeah. let her walk for more than 20, 25 minutes, even though I know she probably could walk longer. Yeah. Um, Prevention of re-injuries, which is, you know, adjusting a food level to what a patient can tolerate, and, and this also promotes a healthy weight, mm -hmm. uh, as in, you know, like actually being able to eat all the good stuff and burning the calories. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, pff, this is not good when you're when you're older, maybe. Yeah. No, she walks. She gets up. She gets up. She sleeps. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so That's much. That's our time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Thank you.